Okay, um, we are now ready to do the last slide problems. There's four problems for that one. And I might make two videos depending on how large they are. Okay, let's start with the first one. 240 grams of water. So I have the mass for water. 240 grams. It's initially at 20 degrees Celsius, so initial temperature of water, 20 degrees Celsius. It's mixed with an unknown mass of iron, which is initially at 500 degrees, so initial iron temperature is 500 degrees Celsius. When thermal equilibrium is reached, the system has a temperature of 42 degrees Celsius, so final temperature for water is the same as the final temperature for iron and it's 42 degrees Celsius. Remember the final temperatures will always be the same because the system reaches equilibrium. Find the mass of the iron, mass of iron, if the specific heat for iron is 0 0.45 joules per gram degree Celsius. And by now we should know that the specific heat for water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, I have all the pieces I need. First of all, I can say that all of the heat that the iron lost was gained by the water. So I can first calculate that amount of heat, which is going to be equal to the amount that, that iron lost, but with a different sign. And then I can, from that, I can calculate the mass of iron. So I can do the heat for water is equal to the mass for water, so mc delta t. Should say it in your sleep now. So the mass is 240 grams times c, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius times my delta T is final minus initial, final is 42, minus the initial temperature for water was 20 degrees Celsius. This gives me 22 degrees Celsius, and this is of course multiplied by the rest. So this cancels out, grams cancel out, and this give, gives me a Q of 22,091 gram or 91.5 joules, I'm sorry. So that's the amount of heat that the water gained. We assume that that's all of the heat that Q, um, the iron lost. So the iron, the Q for iron is equal to the negative for the Q for water. They're just negative in, in sign. So minus 22,091.5 joules. That's the amount of heat that the iron lost. So now I know that. I also know that Q for iron is equal to M times C times delta T, all for iron. To find the mass for iron, I can isolate that by dividing by C delta T both sides. C delta T cancels out, so I have my mass isolated, and now I can plug in the numbers. The Q for iron, we calculated it from the water. Don't forget the sign, minus 22,091.5 joules, divided by the C for the iron is 0 0.45 joules per gram degree Celsius, and that's uh, multiplied by the delta T, which is final temperature, 42 degrees Celsius, minus 500 degrees Celsius. Don't be afraid that that's going to be a negative value because you have a negative value over here. This is going to give you minus 458 degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius cancel out. Joules will cancel out. This will be 1 over 1 over gram, so the gram will come up on top. And my negative sign will cancel. 
leaving me with a mass of 107.2 grams of iron. That is how you calculate the mass for iron. You can break it up in two pieces. Now in the next problem, when we calculate final temperatures, we will have to combine these two. We cannot split them apart like we're doing here, that we're calculating just the water separately and then using that value over here, we're going to have to use them all together and I'll show you how to do that in um, the next problem. Okay, let's look at the next problem where we have to solve simultaneously. A 248 gram piece of copper, so I'm going to write them, here's my mass of copper, 248 grams. It's initially at 314 degrees Celsius, so initial temperature of copper, 314 degrees Celsius. It's dropped into 390 milliliters of water. So my mass of water is going to also be 390 grams. I'm assuming one gram per degree, or um, one gram per mil den density. If it doesn't tell you otherwise, whenever you just see a volume for water, assume that's also the same as the amount in grams. So I was given a volume of 390 milliliters this is also the same as 390 grams. <clears throat> and it tells me that initially, the initial temperature for water is 22.6 degrees Celsius. Assuming that all heat transfer occurs only between the copper and the water, calculate the final temperature, the specific heat for copper is 0.386 joules per gram degrees Celsius. For water, we should know by now, 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. I'm asked to find the final temperature for both the copper and the water because they're going to be, they're, they will have reached thermal equilibrium, so the final temperature is the same for both. Okay, what do I know? I know that the negative, so minus Q for copper is equal to the Q for water. This is true because, as I say in lecture, we assume that all of the amount of heat that was lost by copper was gained by the water. The negative just stands for the fact that the copper is the one that loses the heat. So the amount is equal, but it's just negative in sign because one loses and one gains. Copper loses, water gains. Now I can take both of these Q's and I can expand them knowing Q equals MC delta T. Keep the sign. This is going to be the hardest problem you do with, with these types of specific heat calculations. And most students just struggle with a sign. So be very, very careful. Do not skip a step. Okay, so I have a minus and I can say the mass of copper times the C for copper times final temperature, which is the same for both, so I don't have to put Cu here, minus the initial temperature for copper. That's, I just expanded Q because I know Q is equal to all that. Now I can also expand this Q, but with the, with the water values. So the mass for water times the specific heat for water, times the final temperature, which I don't know, I'm calculating, but these are the same, so I don't put a subscript for Cu or water, because they're the same, minus the initial temperature for water. Okay, now I can go in and plug in numbers. Don't lose that sign. Minus the mass for copper, it's 248 times the C for copper is 0 0.386 times T final, I don't know, so I just leave it. T final minus T initial, which is 314, is equal to the mass of the water, which I know is 390 grams, times the C for water, which is 4.184, times, once again, T final, I don't know, so I leave that 
minus the t initial, which I know is 22.6 degrees. Okay. To simplify it, I just do this product first, do this product, and then I'll distribute. So this will be minus, one second here, 95.728 times T final minus 314 is equal to this product here gives me 1631 point seven six times t final minus twenty two point six okay I just basically all I, all I did is I did these two products and they gave me these numbers do not skip a step because it will be much easier this way it's a little longer but chances are you won't get messed up with the sign now that I have it in this form I can distribute across these parentheses, which means that I take the number that's outside and I multiply it by each of the numbers here, re, um, preserving the sign. So I have minus 95.728 multiplied by TF, so that's minus 95.728 times TF plus, because I'm multiplying minus and a minus, so plus 95.728 times 314. I do the same thing over here. I have 1631.76 times T final minus, because I don't have a minus here to cancel that minus, so I keep that minus, 1631.76 multiplied by 22. So I distributed across these parentheses. Now I can just reduce. So I can do this product and I can do this product. Minus 95.728 times final temperature plus, if you do that, you get 30,000. 058.59 is equal to 1631.76 times T final minus, if you do this product, it gives you 36,877.78. Okay, now I have terms that have T final and I have terms that do not. So isolate both. If I take this and I bring it on this side, then it will become a positive number. If I take this number and I bring it on this side, it will become a positive number as well. So I'll have on this side, I'll have 30,058.59 plus 36,877.78. Point seventy eight is equal to sixteen thousand third or sixteen thirty one point seven six times T final plus because this was minus but if it crosses on the other side of that equal sign it becomes positive ninety five point seven two eight times T final now if I do this this gives me 66,936.37 is equal to, a so 1,727.49 times T final. To isolate T final, I divide both sides by 1727.49. I hope you can still see it, 17, or 27. 0.49. This cancels, leaving me the final temperature. So T final is equal to 38.7 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I'm going to stop and check my work to make sure that I have my answer makes sense. 
my final temperature is less than the initial temperature of the copper, which makes sense because the copper was the hot object put in a cool water, so it's going to lose the heat, which means its temperature gonna go it's gonna go down, which is true. And the initial temperature of the water is 22.6. This is larger than the initial temperature of the water, which makes sense because water gains that heat from the copper, so its temperature is going to go up. The final temperature then should be in between the initial temperatures of the hot object and the cold object, which it is, and that's a good thing. That's what I need. Okay, I am going to erase this, and then I'm going to show you two more problems that are just like this. This is the hardest one, um, the hardest type of problem like this to calculate the final temperature because you're working simultaneously and you can get very confused with the sign. So I'm going to show you two more problems and hopefully it will become easier the more you see it. Okay?